right, well, welcome back, everyone. So it finally happened. I put together a very detailed one-year review of my experience with the Brompton, and all of the files got corrupted on the SD card. So here I am, starting over from scratch again. Now, in some ways, I do think that that was a slight blessing in disguise because it really gave me the chance to kind of reflect on my experience a little more, and I realized there were some things that I left out of the review. So. Take two, we're starting over again. I'm gonna run through my one year experience on the Brompton, even if it is two months late, uh, and let you guys know what I think of the bike still after all this time. Now I know that some of you subscribe to this channel and follow along specifically to get Brompton content, and I know I haven't really put anything out this year, and that's because I've been spending a lot of time on my other bike or on my new Trail 125 or on the Himalayan or just simply busy with work things. So if you're only here for the quick review and you don't want to sit through the whole video, here's what I can tell you. I still really like the bike. I still use it two to three times a week to commute on and I enjoy it. I still think it's incredibly practical. I love that it's kind of goofy and I still get a lot of questions about it. And I've had no major uh, failures with it or breakdowns. And so I'm glad I bought it still. I have no regrets and I have no intention on selling it. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. If you are here for the full detail review, I've made some notes and I'll start with the pros. A lot of these are very obvious and I spoke about these in my three month review, but I think it's important to reiterate that they still hold true. So first and foremost, the bike is fun. And I still believe that. Obviously I can ride my full size bike, but um, I still get a smile on my face every morning when I come out and I unfold this bike and I take off down the street on it. So the fun novelty factor, while it does diminish slightly, uh, it never fully wears off and I still get such a kick out of riding this bike. Number two, it has been very reliable. There have been a few small things that have gone wrong with the bike, which I'll get into, but no major breakdowns, no major failures. And as you know, I rode a hundred miler on it last year. And again, no major issues. Uh, the bike is very unique and I keep talking about that, but there are no dealers here in Flagstaff that sell Brompton. So uh, in all the time I've been here, I've only ever seen one other Brompton. So as you can imagine, I get a lot of questions. Now, if I was riding this down in Phoenix, there's quite a few down there. The place I bought this is in Phoenix. And so, you know, they're not quite as rare or silly looking down in Phoenix, but up here, uh, I get a lot of questions and I love it. I love talking about it. I love telling people why it's such a good bike and why they should get one too. Uh, that goes along with my next point is that uh, I still find it incredibly practical and useful. Obviously I've got the the C bag up front here, which I use to carry my laptop and my things for work, but I also use for groceries. Uh, and it obviously has the rear rack, which I can put things on as well. And I've got this little pouch here on the handlebars. So there's a lot of places that you can store stuff. And then of course, obviously the fact that it folds up and you can put it on your desk or take it into the cafe or the grocery store or things like that. Uh, all goes along with that practicality component. Uh, it's a really great commuter. I know I've talked about this many times. I could certainly take my full size bike in as my commuter, but I do like using this bike as my commuter because I can take it in my office and tuck it away. And it's just, honestly, it's more fun to ride. Now along the lines of it being a practical commuter, I do like the fact that the bike is small and that it does fold up so small as compared to other foldable bikes. I think the Brompton is the most streamlined. Uh, of course you pay for that, it is an expensive bike. Um, but I do like how small it can fold. And I have, while I have not taken it on an airplane yet, I do know that I could fold this up small enough to put it in an overhead bin on an airplane. As I mentioned, I love all the luggage options despite the small size. And of course, if you want, there's a lot of potential to accessorize it, even though I have not done a lot of that. Now, to be fair, I think it's important to talk about some of the negatives with the bike. Uh, the first thing I will say is that despite its small size, uh, it is actually kind of heavy, so especially this configuration. So the H handlebars, which are the bigger handlebars, as well as the R model with the rear rack, this is probably the heaviest configuration of a Brompton that you can get. Uh, and it's also the standard steel. So I think it weighs something like 27 or 28 pounds, which is definitely on the heavy side. So with that said, I think if I could go back and do it again, 
One of the things I might consider is actually getting the version without the rear rack um, because honestly, I just don't use the rear rack as much as I thought I would. Now, I do like that it gives a, the bike a stable platform for um, when it's in the park position or when it's in the folded position, but again, is it worth that extra weight? I don't know. Another thing is, you know, is it worth the extra few hundred dollars to get the ultralight version and shave, uh, shave a few pounds there as well? Uh, it's something that I think I would consider a little more seriously than I did this first time around. The fact that this bike does fold so small and has such small tires also means that you definitely feel every bump, every crack in the bike path, every crack in the sidewalk, every crack on the street, every little pothole, you feel 10 times worse than you do on a full, uh, full size bike. So also something to think about, um, you really have to be a little more vigilant when you ride and pick good lines if, uh, if the particular bike path or road you're on has a lot of cracks uh, or potholes. Also, because the tires are so small, it can be difficult to get to the, um, the valves in order to inflate the tires. My full size pump does not fit in here, so I have to use a different pump to inflate my tires. Something I noted here that is kind of a downside is, um, you know, because it's a folding bike, it is less efficient uh, for actual biking. Uh, when I get on my full size bike, it's an entirely different experience and I feel like the amount of work I put in uh, translates into so much more uh, results like I can make three rotations in the on the pedals and make it so much farther and using less energy but that's the trade-off you get with a small foldable bike uh, you might be thinking oh I can take it anywhere I want to go and while that's mostly true I love that I can fold it up take it into the coffee shop or the grocery store and no matter where I've taken it up to this point I've never once been kicked out of a place uh, so most people don't mind you bringing it in however it can also be a little bit awkward. Um, so for example, uh, I wanted to bike to the start of a trail run about three miles away. And I realized if I biked the Brompton there and folded it up, what do I do with it? Um, chain it to the bike rack, I guess, but then it also was kind of very conspicuous and sort of like, hey, steal me. Um, so. It's really nice that it's foldable and carryable just about anywhere when you're with it, but if you actually have to leave it somewhere, uh, it makes me much more nervous than leaving my other bike, which I can just U-lock right to a bike rack. Now again, you can U-lock this to a bike rack, but it's also going to draw a lot more attention than a standard bike. So sometimes, despite the fact that it's meant to go anywhere, it can be a little bit awkward. Another thing that I've noted on here is the shifting can sometimes cause problems. I did have an issue with the internal gear hub and I had to uh, adjust the little chain back there for it to finally kind of get into the right position. But for a while, my shifting was getting stuck or wasn't quite working right despite me doing everything correctly down there. So it's just something that the in to know is that the internal gear shifting hub can be a little bit finicky at times. Another thing to note is that there are pieces on this bike that are kind of cheap plastic. One great example is this front luggage mount. I actually unscrewed this piece here in order to hide an Apple AirTag in there. And when I screwed it back on, it stripped the plastic. So now this piece here is loose. And what that means is when I do put my bag on here, uh, sometimes it doesn't always clip, which isn't a big deal, but ultimately I'm gonna need to buy a new front luggage bracket. Another con for me at least is the fact that there are no Brompton dealers anywhere near me. So if I want to take it into a store that has experience working on Bromptons, I have to take it over two hours away down to Phoenix, which is kind of like my deal with the Himalayan. There's no Royal Enfield dealers here, so that is something to deal with. All right, so just a few notes that I would make is pretty much everything on my bike is standard. I have the standard saddle here, uh, and I've, I've been perfectly happy with it. Certainly something like a Brooks would probably be more co comfortable in the end, but uh, I don't see any need to really upgrade considering I mostly just use this as a commuter bike. Um, I did make note of the issue I had with the gear, the internal gear shifter. Uh, what I did was I had to take this off to adjust something and when I connected it back on, despite sighting it through the hole as you're supposed to, um, I had a lot of issue with 
the shifting getting stuck on the handlebars. So that did prove to be a little bit of a finicky um, issue, but ultimately I finally got it set up just the way it's supposed to be and everything has been shifting like it should. As you can see, I did put a small handlebar bag on here, which fits a drink or fits my GoPro or fits um, my cell phone or whatever else. Now in here I have a note that I wanna talk about as well. And these are things that if I could go back and do it again, that I would consider a little differently when buying a Brompton for the first time. The first thing I would say is the handlebars. Now I really do enjoy having the H bars and being able to sit up a little more upright and have that more vertical posture and more kind of casual feel for commuting. But I think if I could go back and do it again, I actually would get the M bars. Only because I think uh, the extra little bit of height you get with these handlebars, to me, isn't worth the weight uh, that you add to the bike. In addition, I'm not a very tall guy. I'm only 5'9", and I just don't think I need the H bars. I think the M bars would have given me just enough upright of a position uh, and not added that extra bit of weight. So I think if I could go back and do it again, I would get the M bars. Uh, I've already spoken to the fact that if I could go back and do it again, I may consider not getting the rear rack. Uh, it's something I would certainly think about seriously. Now the other thing that I would tell you is that I bought this bike with a minus 12% gearing on the main chain ring. What that means is that this bike is configured for hills. So I've got an extra hill climbing granny gear, but that comes at the expense of not being able to go as fast in my highest gear. So there have definitely been many times I've been riding this bike where I wish I could have gone a little bit faster. Uh, it tops out about 25 miles per hour and there's been certainly times I wanted to go faster. On the other side of that coin, I've only really used the granny gear maybe a handful of times. So for the most part, I do just fine with the one plus gear and I just never need that one minus gear. So all that is to say, if I could go back and do it again, I would probably just get the standard gearing because I think that's honestly the best suited for my situation. So what that really means in the end is that I think the perfect Brompton for me is actually like the most standard Brompton you can buy. The M bars, standard gearing, no rear rack. So the M6L. Uh, so that's probably what I would go with now if I could go back and do it again. Unless, of course, I went with the electric model. The other thing that I might consider is whether or not it's worth the extra money to get the ultra light version and sh shave a few pounds there as well. I'm really starting to realize uh, how much I wish this bike were as light as possible to really make it as portable as possible. Not to mention the fact that the ultralight versions come in that sort of lacquer color, which I think is a really cool color. Now, of course, I say all this, and I think Brompton just announced that they're changing their entire nomenclature naming configuration for all of their bikes. So I honestly don't even know what they call their new models. I just know that this is an H6R, and I think I would have really liked an M6L ultralight. And lastly, as I just said, if I could do it again, I might actually consider getting the electric Brompton because I think having that would be really cool. Although they are incredibly expensive and I don't know if it's worth the extra $1,500 or whatever it is to pay for the electric model. So that does cover just about everything. As far as accessories, the only things that I've added to the bike are this little handlebar bag and the uh, larger, Brompton roller wheels. These are the official Brompton roller wheels and it does definitely make uh, the bike roll a little bit easier. I do think I'm going to end up picking up one of those little leather straps that goes around the main bar so that when the bike is folded up but the seat is extended, the tire doesn't pop off, which does happen to me a lot when I'm in grocery stores. It gets kind of frustrating. Um, and then lastly, I will tell you that I do have a small electric pump that I bought for the motorcycle, which works really well for pumping up the tires because it has a flexible tube. So it's just a little pump and it's got one of these flexible tubes uh, that you can basically 
bend around and use to pump the tires up. And so while I can't use my full size floor pump because the head is too large on it, I can use this pump to get in there and it gives me a digital readout of the PSI as well. So I always know I'm pumping up the bike to the right pressure. A couple of quick things that I did forget to mention with the bike is that I do carry the standard Brompton toolkit that's in the primary tube. I also carry a spare tube for the tires in here as well. And then lastly, the, the reason there's the sticky note on the bottom here is um, I did have an issue with the rear reflector. Uh, it basically unscrewed itself and fell off while I was riding one day. So I did have to remount that. Uh, reconnect it. Thankfully, uh, I managed to recover all the bolts and pieces uh, when it fell off, and so no harm done. But just kind of minor wear and tear, things to keep in mind is bolts do come loose, things do come free, and uh, you just got to make sure that you check things once in a while, you tighten things up, and if you got to put a little Loctite on something, you put a little Loctite on it. But other than that, again, I've had no major failures. As far as future upgrades, the one last thing I will tell you is that I do think I'm going to replace the tires with the tan wall tires only because I just think they look really cool and I think it will complement the orange of the bike very nicely. But I am in no rush to do that because honestly these tires still have a ton of life left on them. So when the time comes, the day comes that I need to replace the tires, I do think that I will put the tan wall tires on. So I think that's it. That covers all the sticky notes. And again, I hope that this was useful and that uh, you go out into the world more well-informed when you consider whether or not you want to purchase a Brompton or a different folding bike or a different bike altogether. So thank you so much for watching. Take care, be safe, and I really will try to get out some more Brompton content in the next few months. See you guys.